we are on the 115 mark. Um, so I want to say hello. We'll maybe wait a one more minute or so to officially kick off, but just a word of welcome to everybody. And I appreciate you all joining us. And um, I wish we could be together in person, uh, but thankful that we have uh, such uh, technology that we can connect and as safely as possible. So. And as more people are, are joining us, we'll wait just a minute, minute. but um, this is the workshop of um, walking with youth as they discern life after high school. Uh, at least on Zoom, it's not as awkward if you're in the wrong place. You can, you don't have to get up in front of the whole room and walk out, but I hope you all are, are here for this workshop. <laughs> all right. Well, since we only have an hour, I am going to go ahead and get started with uh, a brief introduction, a little bit of some housekeeping rules, and to give you an idea of what to expect in this hour together. Uh, my name is Perrin Tribble. I work at Presbyterian College, which is in Clinton, South Carolina. Um, at PC, I serve as the Director of Church Relations. Um, so I'm kind of a uh, externally facing uh, member of our staff. And then we have a whole religious life staff as well that works here. Um, I served in youth ministry for eight years before I came to PC. Um, one of my favorite things about youth ministry is watching youth really grow into who they're created to be. Um, particular joy of when they're growing confidently um, into who they're created to be um, and into community. Um, but that's not always the case too. And so um, I kind of have a heart for this topic due to church relations, but also due to my eight years in youth ministry previously. Um, Julie is also on this call with us and she has graciously volunteered to, to um, be here to help troubleshoot, to help coordinate some things, um, to manage our chat a little bit um, as we get going. So uh, thankful for Julie being here and um, if there's anything you all need, I hope uh, you will reach out either via chat, um, verbally with us, or I think you all were given a tech support through GNTV, through APSI. And so those are all some resources that we have uh, as we continue this workshop. I do want to let you all know that I hope this workshop is, is conversational. I hope that you all will uh, talk back to me, talk with each other. Um, I want this to be kind of a, a little bit of a brainstorming session towards the end. I have some interesting things that I have found and want to share with you all. And I hope that you will uh, take this time to connect with one another as well, share some best practices, um, share ideas uh, and offer support and encouragement in that way. As we're going, there will be times where I am presenting to you, where I have a PowerPoint for you that I wanna show you some things. So if you have questions during that part, um, feel, free, feel free to throw them in the chat feature. Um, again, that's Julia has graciously volunteered to help me with that. So all questions can be addressed either through the chat or I will pause um, after a couple of slides or a couple of minutes and check back in with everybody, see how we're doing um, and have time for conversation there as well. So two different ways. Um, I will ask just Zoom etiquette. I think we've all learned a lot that if you're not participating in the conversation, if you'll stay muted for us, that helps with feedback and, and other noises. And um, I know that my dogs like to bark as soon as I take my mic off of uh, mute. And so that may be the case for some of you as well. At the, towards the end of this workshop, we are going to do some breakout rooms. Um, we'll do about four breakout rooms and that'll be a chance for you all to connect on a smaller level, to have a little bit deeper conversation, a little bit more meaningful conversation versus trying to have everyone um, share over the, the larger group. So I wanna go ahead and prepare you for that. That'll be a, a time where um, I hope you'll fully participate in that. It could be some really rich conversation, some good ideas to come from that. Again, that'll be kind of at the end of that uh, hour or the end of the workshop. 
I want to go ahead and tell you too what I hope to accomplish in this hour, kind of what to expect, what we're going to cover, and um, starting with the role that the church plays in this season of a youth's life. What does it mean to, to walk with these youth as they're discerning life after high school? What is our role? Um, and I'm going to guess that role looks different for each of us. Each of our ministries is completely different and our context is different. Um, but if so helping us kind of name that for ourselves. Um, I want to think about what we can offer youth and their parents in this season of life as they're getting ready and making these major decisions. I also think uh, this may be true for a lot of you. We've seen the shift in uh, titles go from, you know, director of youth ministry or associate pastor of youth ministry, uh, really evolving into youth and families. Uh, that might be the case for some of you. Um, and so let's think about the, the family unit um, in this season of life, too. How can we be supportive? What can we offer uh, parents or caregivers or uh, guardians? And then, like I, I mentioned earlier, a little bit of brainstorming, uh, programming ideas, uh, pastoral care ideas, and um, things that maybe you've tried before and worked well and you want to share it with the group or um, things that didn't work well and kind of want to give a heads up to other folks. That'll be appropriate, too. What I hope to, to stay away from and kind of I don't want you to, to take this away I'm not trying to prep you all to be a guidance counselor. Um, I'm not trying to prep you all to be uh, a college um, coach, somebody who helps with applications and, and things like that. Um, really and truly trying to keep our, our youth rooted in their uh, identity as a child of God as they move from the care of your youth group to the next phase of life is really what we're interested in. Um, they have plenty of access to information uh, and guidance counselors and things like that through schools. So really focusing on how the church plays a unique role in this season of life for our kids, our youth. Uh, so far, we've had other folks join. That is our housekeeping rules. Are we all good to continue? Is there anything uh, so far that we are missing or want to address? All right, good deal. I'm going to open us in a word of prayer before I uh, share my screen with you also, if you will pray with me. Creator God, we give thanks for the opportunity to stay connected with one another so that we can really lean into our youth and serve them in the ways that they need at particular stages of life. We give thanks for, to you for entrusting us with the care of youth and their families. And God, we invite you into this space and into our conversations and that you will uh, be with us and the spirit will move and give us creativity and energy and joy. We pray these things in your name. Amen. Okay. So I'm going to share my screen with you all and, and start this with a little bit of scripture reading. Um, we're going to do it Lectio Divina style. Um, except for the full three times, we're only going to do it twice. So I will uh, show you our scripture. I am very much a visual learner. Let's see. All right. And are you all seeing the title slide? Uh, walking with youth, thumbs up. All right. So here's our scripture for today, and it's focusing, it's from 1 Corinthians, and it's focusing on spiritual gifts. I want this scripture to be the foundation of our workshop and our time together, um, because I think this is going to serve our youth well, is if we can stay rooted in scripture and in our identity as a child of God, then we can, we can go forward with these kinds of life uh, transitions and stages. So as I read this scripture, I want you to notice anything that stands out to you. Uh, if there's a word that you hear more than the others, if there's a phrase or an idea from the scripture from 1 Corinthians, uh, throw it in the chat as you hear it. Um, and then we will uh, see kind of some of the responses and, and what we are, uh, what is being kind of shown to us through this reading. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same spirit distributes them. 
There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in everyone, it is the same God at work. Now to each one, the manifestation of the spirit is given for the common good. To one, there is given through the spirit, a message of wisdom. To another, a message of knowledge by means of the same spirit. To another, faith by the same spirit. To another, gifts of healing by that one spirit. To another, miraculous powers. To another, prophecy. To another, distinguishing between spirits. To another, speaking in different kinds of tongues. And still another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of one spirit and the same spirit. And the spirit distributes them to each one just as the spirit determines. So 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 12, 4 through 11. What were some of the, the things that we see? I see different and same, common good, the same spirit to another. These are good. A lot of these things stood out to me as I was reading the scripture in preparation. And it is a great reminder that as we're helping these youth discern their life after high school, after leaving youth group or leaving their community, they're all created differently, each one of them, each one of us. And so it is um, important to remember that we're not going to walk away from this conference or this workshop with one idea that is going to work for each of our kids and each of our youth or each of our programs even. Um, and so I, I appreciate that different and um, another and, and same spirit are standing out to you all. The second time we read it as part of this Lectio Divina, I still want you to listen for words that stand out or phrases that stand out. But instead this time, as I read this scripture, think about who you were at 17. 16, 17 years old. Think back to that time in your life. Um, and depending on, you know, ages and stuff, but think back to when you were trying to decide uh, what you wanted to do after high school. Was it going to college? Was it a gap year? Was it a service year? Um, think about what you thought you were good at at that time and what you thought your gifts were and have they, have they changed? Have they evolved since then? So now we're going to read the same scripture, but we're going to listen to it as if in our best, in the best way possible, as if we are 17 years old or 16 years old again. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in everyone, it is the same God at work. Now to each one, the manifestation of the spirit is given for the common good. To one, there is given through the spirit, a message of wisdom. To another, a message of knowledge by means of the same spirit. To another, faith by the same spirit. To another, gifts of healing by that one spirit. To another, miraculous powers. To another, prophecy. To another, distinguishing between spirits to another speaking in different kinds of tongues and to still another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of one and the same spirit and the spirit distributes them to each one just as the spirit determines. Okay, so as your 17 year old self, did you think of anything differently during this reading of scripture? Did you hear anything? Um, differently, something that may have been comforting to know when you were 17. Let's see some answers coming through. Same Lord, same God, same spirit. Hmm, that's a good one. So as we as we continue with this conversation, knowing that all of our youth are created differently, knowing that each of us are in different ministry contexts, uh, we can have these conversations knowing that it's the same Lord, the same God, the same spirit. 
uh, that gives these different gifts. Yeah. And so how can we as the church help our youth know that they are created individually and given these um, very specific gifts? Um, this You can do this maybe even just as a raise of hands. Have you experienced um, some growth or even change of your gifts or what you maybe perceive that you're good at since the age of 17? Have things shifted for you? Did you think you would be here when you were 17 years old? <laughs> yeah, I definitely did not. And, and in fact, when I was 16 or 17, I maybe would have told you that I was my spiritual gift maybe was basketball, right? I wouldn't have been able to fully claim some of the gifts that maybe I um, was already experiencing, but didn't know how to name it. That didn't last long after 17. I had a college coach tell me I was too slow to be this short. Uh, and so, and so these are, these are, it's funny and it's, but it's reasons why we need to know how to help youth work through the, this season of life and how we can help them uh, see a little bit beyond that. All right. So this scripture is going to sort of serve as our foundation for what we're about to explore next. Um, what I'm going to share with you all is something that I'm excited about, some things that have gotten me thinking. And I conducted a survey, survey may be generous, assessment may be more accurate. Um, in which I got 38 current college students to respond to a handful of questions that I had asked them. These 38 students are not just from Presbyterian College. Um, I sent them to youth that I used to work with. I sent it to a friend of mine who works in campus ministry um, with the intention of getting a wider uh, array of responses. And so, and then there are uh, a chunk of students from Presbyterian College who did respond for me. And what's interesting is that not all 38 students grew up in the church and not all 38 have uh, even a faith-based community in college now. And I tell you that because you may see, I have some graphs and you, if you're adding up these numbers, not every question got 38 responses. And that's because they didn't have the experiences that I was trying to survey or poll. If they didn't grow up in the church, then they didn't answer um, the question about what was meaningful to you about the church in high school, right? So if you see some, some numbers that aren't adding up to 38, keep that in mind that some of our students who are not, uh, did not grow up in the church or not connected with faith-based school just didn't respond, which is fair. Um, and so I'm going to share with you all a little more about our student demographics. This is the part where I'm going to get into PowerPoint a little bit more and stay here for a minute. So if you have questions as I'm going through, this is a great time to use the chat feature. And again, Julie's here to help me. And um, I'll pause about, as we go through, I'll, I'll pause and check in, see how we're doing. All right, so some of the deeper demographics, I gave you a little bit, I gave you some numbers. Um, all the responses are from current college students, but again, not just from Presbyterian College. Um, some of the schools that weighed in are from uh, all the way from UNC Chapel Hill to Wofford in Spartanburg, South Carolina, um, to the University of Alabama and Tuscaloosa. So we have small colleges, we have large universities, and we have not, um, but not all from Presbyterian College. A majority of the students that were polled or surveyed graduated high school in either North Carolina and South Carolina. That's where we see a lot of these students coming from. Some of the other uh, states represented are Georgia, Florida, and Pennsylvania. And we had one student who weighed in from, who uh, graduated and grew up and graduated in Lisbon, Portugal, but now attends uh, school in the States. 60% uh, of the students uh, said that they attended a PCUSA church in high school. I did not confirm membership, so I don't know if this means that they went with a friend to a PCUSA church high school youth group, or if they were baptized, confirmed, graduated as members of this, but of them, they self-identified that they, 60% went to a PCUSA church in high school. 
And then of these students, these 38, 55 who responded, 55% have reported to have connected with a faith-based community in college, um, which is a little bit higher than maybe I would have thought. That also could be because I was polling my old youth group, um, some of them in which that happened. So, but 55%. All right, and uh, this is one of the questions I asked. Now there's a lot of numbers, and so I'm gonna help you really focus in on the important things. Uh, this question is asking, what if any church experiences had the largest positive influence on your life while in high school? And on this question, they're able to check all that applied. I'm gonna show you a graphic on the next slide where they had to choose one out of this listing. All right, so to, take a lot of words and numbers and help you focus. Right here we have um, friendships uh, within the youth group is weighing in with the highest count. They have 28 uh, votes saying that this was the most positive uh, influence in youth group while they're in high school. Then we have our next one, which was experiences at youth conferences. Um, I didn't list specifically youth, any like particular youth conferences this is exactly how I asked them. So it's not like I said, Montreat Youth Conference or um, Massanetta or any of the other uh, summer youth conferences that are pretty well known. I just left it generic. And then just uh, right behind youth conferences, we have mission trips are uh, the third highest ranking in what, what church experiences did you get, did you have the most, had the most positive influence on your life? The reason I want to show you these things, this is going to come back into our conversation in a little bit. So if we're, if we're looking at these high ranking experiences of friendships and community that's built in the youth group, youth conferences and mission trips, then we can really dive in a little deeper and help our youth unpack what in particular did you really like about that youth conference? What in particular did you really spark joy um, while we were on our mission trip? So we can look a little more into that, that'll come back into play. All right, so the same exact list that we just looked at, if you had to pick one from this, one experience from this list, what would it be? And you may be able to see friendships. So friendships and community are really playing uh, a big part. And I understand this is a small sampling. And so uh, I wanna remind you of that. I understand this is only 38 students, but um, it may be worth it to conduct a similar survey for your youth group and find out really what it is uh, of the experiences that you offer that really are ranking highest. But friendships and community are ranking high. And then again, it stays about on par with, with the way that our first graph broke down. Youth conferences have a really high uh, positive influence and in mission trips. I'm really sorry for those who put a lot of effort into confirmation like I used to. I still think that has more of a positive influence than maybe they are polling here. And it's probably because things like friendships and weekend retreats often play into confirmation experience. So this is not to uh, discourage you from your confirmation curriculum or programming. Um, and again, 38 students. All right, this, uh, this next slide I'm gonna show you is gonna look busy again, but I promise I'm gonna help walk through these numbers. And so, so don't get overwhelmed with these graphics or anything like that. So here we have the question, um, how likely, and what I was asking was how likely were you to consult this group of, uh, of people in their lives, how likely were you to consult them on the college decision process? Um, and I did specifically say college decision process and not life after high school here. Um, so our numbers here, our church leaders are in red, family members and relatives, uh, purple. So if you, you may be noticing a long purple line up here under extremely likely, athletic coaches, teachers or a guidance counselor, and friends. Um, they, I put other, but they did not, no student 
wrote in what other would be. Um, so I don't know if that was their family dog or somebody who works at a coffee shop. I'm not sure what other would be. Um, yet I created that in the survey. Um, so really focusing here on the red and the purple. So we have our church leaders in red, family members and relatives in purple. And a majority of our students said that they are extremely likely to talk to family members about the college decision process. And so this is an indicator to me that our, maybe as the church, we should offer resources for parents and guardians who are walking along their youth, um, trying to navigate this. And so I have some ideas that I'll share with you all, but this is going to, we can look at programming for youth, but also, so also for our families, our, our parents or our guardian units that are um, trying to help youth process it because they're most likely going to go to them. Now I want to do, want to kind of zero in. I took that, uh, I created this table to show you kind of numerically. Um, how likely they were to talk to church leaders, youth pastors uh, or youth directors, pastor, any kind of church leader, a volunteer advisor. Um, that was clarified all at the beginning. That church leader could be um, somebody who taught Sunday school. It could be a staff member who's the director of youth ministry, a pastor, so that a confirmation mentor. So that was addressed at the beginning. And if you look here at the likelies, extremely likely, moderately likely, slightly likely, that percentage adds up to 59.45%. That somewhere 59, almost 60% of the students are saying that they fall somewhere on the likely spectrum of consulting a church leader about their decisions for life after high school. And that's a pretty high percent. And of course, your youth groups are all different. You may have a core group of students that have been highly involved and active, and you know those are gonna be the students who would talk to you, ask you for references, um, ask you for advice, if you ask you about your alma mater. Um, and so I think it's important that if we're seeing somewhere, even just from this sampling, if we're seeing that 59% of our students could ask us for advice, we need to have our answer ready, right? And they're going to be getting advice from so many other places like we see here. They're gonna be getting advice from family members, uh, relatives, cousins, older cousins, athletic coaches. And that advice is not as likely, right? To be spiritually and scripturally based as we have the opportunity to offer to our youth. And so I think seeing this relatively high percent of uh, likeliness to be consulted. I think it's important to have an answer, to have an approach. Um, I know that we started our workshop off with scripture that reminds us how different each one of us are and the gifts that we are given by the spirit. Um, and so there's probably not a cookie cutter approach to this, but how would you uh, continue to give advice? So um, what could your role be in this decision? Um, and again, without making you the guidance counselor or without making you the, the college coach or the life after high school coach. Um, we're going gonna, gonna to pause there and let's do a little bit of questions. Does some come through, Julie? Yes, you have a few questions in chat. Would you consider camp a retreat or a youth conference? Where would that mm -hmm. fall in the list of priority things that made a, an important impact? Yes, that's that's a good thing. Um, it was it was pretty clear in the survey that retreats were usually weekend, and youth conferences were usually a week long experience. And so it really um, was uh, deciphering between the length of time. And um, I think camp camp may err more on the side of youth conference due to the length of it. But I'm also looking at between retreat and youth conference, I'm looking at a youth group unit experience. So you may have a youth group of 25 and only and five go to summer camp, but they go to three different camps. 
And so I think that would be a little bit different mm-hmm. experience. And it's a different connection with camp counselors um, than it is with, I think, uh, church staff and church advisors and volunteers. It's personally, I, I think mm-hmm. that's, yeah. Okay. Then there was also, a, there were some um, comments that I think make sense in that some of the, the things that show up as important impact um, may be coming in different venue. Like there may be youth who were not able to participate in mission trips or local yeah. service projects. Maybe their church didn't offer it um, mm-hmm. or maybe they just weren't allowed to go or didn't have the funds to go, whatever. And so maybe that comes you know, maybe their experiences come through in different things. And also that confirmation tends to happen in middle school, junior high, around that 12 year mark. Um, But they also might be reporting out that the friendships and the mentoring with adults um, has more of an impact versus the confirmation class and the learnings that they gained there instead. So this, this youth pastor is going to be thankful that maybe it came out in friendships <laughs> and mentoring and maybe confirmation wasn't for naught. <laughs> right. No. And, and to be clear, confirmation is when I was in youth ministry for eight years, that was the highlight of, of my experiences. I loved confirmation and, and I do think the relationships formed there are, are invaluable and do think they play out into the high school years as well. I think we could do a whole workshop on confirmation and relational ministry and confirmation. <laughs> Absolutely. That can, could be a whole topic. All right. Yeah. Great, great questions. And I hope, I hope I still have everyone with me um, because now we're going to move now that we've kind of seen some numbers. Now we're going to move into some uh, ideas and um, some feedback from, from our youth. So I'm going to slide back to PowerPoint. And again, please continue to use the the chat feature as you have thoughts um, as they come up. All right. Oh, I do want to share this with y'all. These uh, factors, what factors influenced your college decision? This is not going to be as pivotal in our conversation coming up, but just interesting. Um, We're feeling at home. Uh, on campus, right? That has ranked really high along with the size of the campus. I think the size of the campus also plays a role in how at home you feel, depending on your uh, depending on your personality and your preference. And then the location of the campus. So those were kind of our three highest ranking along with the other decisions that you can see um, here. Um, I, I do feel like feeling at home on campus and size of campus is just kind of reiterating the importance of relationships and uh, the ability to make relationships, the ability to feel like you belong in community. Just an interesting, um, just an interesting conversation piece. And then here, religious affiliation of, of the college ranked very low. And again, I'm at Presbyterian College, and a lot of our students are not Presbyterian, um, and so I just find that interesting, um, especially for our, our faith-based students. So here we have, this is actually the handout that's available for this workshop. I went ahead and made it a handout, too, because I think it has some good feedback and information to, to make things a little easier to see. I highlighted uh, some of the, the feedback that I wanted to expand upon or, or to get us thinking about ideas. Um, and there's two slides of this feedback. So again, this is the handout for this workshop. And I invite you all to revisit that this handout as well as these slides. These slides are also available as, as will all workshop slides and resources will be available for those participating. Um, So we'll start with this top one that I've highlighted. Going to school in another state where I didn't know anyone, they, meaning their church leaders, the church leaders, my church leaders could have connected me more to their mutual friends through the church that also lived where I was going. And I thought that was interesting because I feel like the church is very connectional and I feel like we all have a colleague or a friend or somebody we've met at a conference who does not live in our immediate community. And um, this youth was saying, it would have been nice to be connected with with somebody before I got there. 
And this could be college chaplains as well. Um, and we're going to look more at that, the, the idea of these college chaplains when we get into programming ideas. Um, maybe have some youth nights for seniors, like what to expect in college or something similar and hear from, from their experiences. For this, I believe their experiences would, is college, current college students. Um, and so having a senior night, something that is just for that class, um, those in the spring that are preparing to go leave home and, um, and go to another college or go to another community, I mean. This could also be, depending on your youth group, I don't want to get stuck in the idea of, of college is next. I want to reiterate that. Um, and so what to expect if you take a gap year? Maybe have a panel, you know, a panel of somebody who did a gap year, somebody who um, went into the workforce, somebody who went to college. So there's, there's options with that. And again, I just don't want to get stuck with the idea that you graduate high school and you go to college. Okay, the third one that I'll highlight on this is uh, they being the church leaders. My church leaders did a great job to show us to act responsibly and to look critically at decision-making opportunities. Uh, my church leaders also showed us what it meant to be good leaders and what is important in life to seek over more idealistic, unrealistic pursuits. Um, and I feel like I'd, I these... Uh, responses were anonymous, and so I don't know the experiences that these students had. I don't know who their youth pastors or youth directors were, but I feel like this uh, act responsibly, look critically, decision-making opportunities, um, those are conversations that we can have in our regular programming. We don't have to add on, right, to these things, but if you're out on a week-long youth conference, that's a great time to say, we're entering worship. It's time to act responsibly. You can have those conversations throughout programming that already exists, um, especially when you're off campus representing your church, representing your community. Um, those are good times to have those conversations. This is the second page of feedback that we got. Again, all this, you can read this on your own time. I don't want to read every single word on this slide to you. So looking at this feedback, um, particularly this, this first one, they being church leaders didn't sugarcoat that life isn't always easy. I would say that it would have been helpful to learn a bit more about how to keep connecting with your faith after high school when you no longer have that church community always around you. Um, I, think, I think our youth know in their heads that graduating high school means a transition out of youth group, but I'm not sure they always understand that that doesn't automatically mean a new faith community just falls into your lap. And so I think that's an interesting feedback and um, would love to, when I get through these next two or three feedback, or yeah, highlighted feedback, uh, I'd love to have open conversation with you all about some of the things that you're reading or hearing in this. So that'll be our next point of conversation. Our next one says, uh, give, give us more opportunities to talk with college students. Um, let's see, they, being the church leaders, they were able to sit down with me and help me with the pros and cons of each school. And then we have this, which is not the only one in our feedback, but after high school, I moved away from my faith. And so this was somebody who participated in high school, um, but they don't really know how their youth advisor could have helped them anymore. They moved away from faith uh, after high school. All right. So I feel like God's been talking a lot. Um, and let's see, is there, Julie, has anything kind of come through our chat that any questions or, or good conversation pieces? Yeah, so um, one, Catherine wanted to know, were any of the students pulled first generation college attendees? Because she wondered if that would make a difference in their responses. That is great. Um, these responses were anonymous. And so I would send them out to groups and they never put their names. I do know that one of the groups that I sent it to um, did have two uh, first generation college students in that group. And it's unfortunate that only one student was from Lisbon, Portugal, and I know exactly who that one is. And so that, that is the only way that I'm able to deduct um, 
that piece of information. Yeah. And how vast was the scope of socioeconomic backgrounds, do you think? Yeah, definitely. Um, it's definitely majority middle class. Majority of these students are, are middle class. And then we, the, um, there's a smaller percentage that are, were lower income students um, and had substantial financial aid um, awarded mm -hmm. for college. Yeah. Okay. So I want to point out that on this call is Jenny Norris Lane, and she's the executive director of the UKIRK. And mm -hmm. um, she commented that we don't often think of connecting youth mm -hmm. instead of connecting their parents. So thanks for pointing that out. And also she offered an, a, a resource that might be helpful to help mm -hmm. you think about what is next that comes from Amazon or is available at Amazon. So you can, um, she put the link in the chat. Yeah. And then Kirsten said that connecting to a church near the college piece is huge. She said she went to a college out of state and her youth leaders connected <clears throat> to a church that she ended up being really involved in throughout college. Yeah. And she even worked there after college. So that's yeah. exciting. That is exciting. <clears throat> and and I do feel like having connecting with a local church or um, connecting with the campus pastor before your student gets there is a huge piece in helping them get from youth group to campus ministry. Um, and we'll look, a, I have a couple of ideas for ways of that connection. So not just the idea of connecting them, but some practical ideas of what you can do to help connect your students. So that's great. And thank you for uh, that resource. It's really helpful. All right. Yeah, she, I think maybe I misunderstood or misread the address, the URL. I saw Amazon and thought, because, you know, I love Amazon. <laughs> um, but she said it's a U for PMA quick scene. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And it can, I'm, I'm seeing the chat now. It can be, this can be very simple. This doesn't have to be creating a whole new programming platform for your youth. I'm going to, um, I can't, it's already, 157. And so I want to make sure that we stay on time and give you all a chance to connect in smaller groups to, to chat. And so the last thing I'm going to show you on this PowerPoint is just a handful of ideas of um, ways to connect uh, or ways to help your youth when they're in this discernment phase of life. And um, these are just some of the things that came to my mind as a previous youth director um, and now being on the college side of things. So we'll get to that. And I, I do want to make sure that we honor time for um, breakout groups. All right. So one of my first ideas is to invite college representatives to youth programming. I mean, I think now one of the things that we can continue to do is see, um, not have our youth on Zoom when we're able to go back in person. You can still Zoom in guests from different colleges and things like that, or invite them to your your uh, your church and to your youth group or your programming or a weekend retreat. Um, one idea that I have is I've noticed being on this side of things and when I was working with youth directly and their families, parents are like, it was so long ago when I was applying to college and college costs a lot more and things like that. And so there, there are people on staff at colleges that will offer financial aid workshops for parents. How do you maximize your student's financial aid package? How do you um, discover the most scholarships available? Um, and at the same time that you're doing a, a workshop for parents and financial aid, you can be doing a, uh, you can also have college representatives that are um, either zoomed in or at your church physically saying, giving kids, youth tips on how to stay uh, rooted in faith when they're in college. Um, speaking for PC, speaking for Presbyterian College, I, as the church relations director, love to do this, love to come to youth groups or even talk over Zoom and helping them make these connections of how to, giving them these, these tips to go ahead and have in their back pocket as they prepare. And we also have people on staff who can offer financial aid workshops for parents. I'm sure there's a lot of colleges that offer this too. So again, just speaking for PC and um, it's as quick as checking out a church, a, a college's website for things like that. Um, this is an idea that I have, and I've seen this um, go very well. So organizing a college campus tour 
So if we know that mission trips and weekend retreats and youth conferences are, um, are high impact moments and bonding through the community of your youth group, um, check out your route on your way to a, a week long youth conference in the summer. Do you pass a school? Do you pass a college? Can you organize a, a campus tour? Can you can give the U Kirk leader a heads up and say, hey, I'm gonna be passing through. Um, do you have time on Saturday afternoon or do you have time on whatever day you're passing through? You, you all can work. I'm sure y'all are pros at logistics, but that would, that's an idea. Um, to host a panel of college chaplains or current or current college students. We heard that in our feedback. Um, again, a lot of schools have college chaplains that are really internally facing. They're there for pastoral care for current students, but maybe with enough planning, with the uh, efficiency and ease that we have now found with Zoom, these could be a little more obtainable. You can also look um, on colleges' websites for titles like church relations. That's really what uh, kind of my role is, is helping um, connect with prospective students and make that bridge between youth group, um, the decision process, and uh, coming to campus. And then lastly, kind of going back to how we started with this, really helping our students understand their spiritual gifts and show, how, and show them how that could like shape their uh, course of study. And, and that being like, if we know that mission trips and weekend retreats and youth conferences are high touch points for our students, really diving into them understanding their spiritual gifts, what they loved about the mission trip and helping them explore that ministry as a vocation or service, servant leadership can follow you into full-time work. It can follow you into college. I, I know I can say again for PC that our religion major has expanded to help prepare students to go into nonprofit leadership and other things that have a servant leadership. Um, so even if they wanna go into banking or wealth management, how can you still do that with a Christ-like approach um, and Christ-like leadership? And so there are ways that um, you can really tap in to what was particularly meaningful about those experiences for your youth. What are these youth's particular spiritual gifts and how can they continue to grow them and, their, and nurture them in the next phase of life? And so this is our conversation starter, right? These ideas. I'm sure you all have ideas that, um, again, like I said at the beginning, maybe you have ideas that have worked well and you're looking for ways to maximize that or grow that, or maybe you're looking for ways in which to um, start one of these traditions or these milestone touch points. And so for that, um, yeah, and we have somebody from Maryville College, I see in the chat. Um, yeah, there's a, there's a whole uh, slew of, of colleges that are Presbyterian based. And this is what we love to do. We love to help and make sure that our youth are ready and prepared for the next phase of life. And so I hope y'all will consider um, reaching out to, to these kinds of positions. Um, any, is there, did any questions come through during that part, Julie? Let's see. Nope. Okay. Nothing new. Great. Um, so here's what we're going to do. We're just going to do randomly four breakout rooms. And before I send you all out, I want you all to have conversation, um, around these topics. We'll do about 10 minutes and then we'll come back for the one last minute of this workshop and close it out. But in the in the breakout groups, if you have the if you come first alphabetically by the first name you put on your Zoom chat, then you have to introduce yourself and get the conversation rolling. So again, they'll be broken up randomly. We're going to do four groups. I'm going to call you back at 2:14 and I'll give a reminder. But if you come first alphabetically in your breakout group, I want you to be the one to say, hey, my name is Taryn. This is my, this is where I am. This is my ministry context. And then hopefully I encourage you all to talk about some of these ideas in ways that you can really enrich this part of, um, of your youth lives. All right, Julie, can you help me with making that happen? I can. Here awesome. we go. Ah, I was saying that went by way too fast. You're so right about that. 
in it. <laughs> yes. oh. All right, as everybody is coming back in, I really wish, these are the times where I really wish we were in person and then we could just walk and go grab a coffee and continue these conversations. Um, but I've put my email address in the chat. Um, if you do want to continue this conversation or if you um, or if you'd like to reach out and help build a panel of college reps or bring any of these programming ideas to your youth group, I'm listing it there. And as everybody, I'll, re I'll repeat that again, it looks like. Um, yeah, so, okay. Man, they're really, they're pushing us. But I've put my email in the chat if anybody would like to continue this conversation or to use uh, Presbyterian College and any of these resources. And I really appreciate y'all joining in and uh, for the fruitful conversation that we've had. Um, I do want to give y'all enough time to go to your next session. And so uh, I think this is going to end on us soon. But thank you again. And please feel free to reach out if, if you need anything or have any questions. Yeah.